Welcome XTC family. Let's dive into some XTC content. Surpro partners with the XTC network expanding its reach throughout Brazil. We're going to look into that. Plus, Aka Finance has added the XTC network. What does that mean? Plus, we're going to hear words from Son White of XTC Network Australia in a digit chain innovators interview. You're not going to want to miss that. If you're an XTC fan, please hit the like and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future content. Let's roll it. Here's a quick quote before we begin. Patience is not very different from courage. It just takes longer. Don't forget to keep your valuable crypto assets safe and offline with a decent biometric wallet. If you haven't taken your assets offline yet, now is the time to do it. Think about it. With possible risk of cyber attacks or exchanges going down or freezing your assets, it's smart to get them offline and onto a hardware wallet. If you purchase it through an affiliate link in the description of any video, you get an amazing deal and it does help support the channel. Thank you. Here we have some big news for the crypto industry. This is specifically good for the XCC network as well. So we had this from Desmond Tatsi. He's a senior legal counsel, crypto lawyer expert. Exciting update for the crypto community, he states. The UAE's Security and Commodities Authority, the SCA, has just released new comprehensive guidelines for virtual assets and virtual asset service providers. This is a significant milestone for anyone involved in the crypto space, and here's why. As we continue to witness the rapid evolution of virtual assets, the SCA has stepped up to ensure that the UA UAE remains a leader in global fintech and crypto sectors. These guidelines offer a clear and structured approach to regulating virtual assets, making the UAE an even more attractive destination for blockchain innovators and crypto entrepreneurs. This isn't only good for uh, the XCC network. This is excellent also for, for Ripple fans, XRP holders out there. So here's some key highlights. Re Regulatory clarity. The guidelines provide detailed regulations on various virtual asset activities, ensuring a secure and transparent environment for trading and managing virtual assets. Crypto-friendly environment. That's important. The UAE's progressive approach to crypto regulations is further reinforced, making it a haven for businesses in the virtual asset space. Lower, lower corporate income tax with only 9% tax on annual revenue, the UAE offers one of the most competitive tax regimes for crypto businesses. Ease of business setup, the streamlined process for a company and corporation and management make the UAE a deal location for setting up and operating virtual asset businesses. Whether you're a seasoned player or new to the crypto scene, the guidelines offer the necessary framework to operate confidently within the UAE. The SEA's effort ensure that the UA remains a hub for innovation, providing a secure and regulated environment for all virtual asset activities. You know, we know that London is a, is a big hub for uh, digital assets and this technology moving forward, and it seems very much the same way with the UAE. In my personal humble opinion, I actually see the UAEs being more of a hub than even London. Here's some big news for the expansion of the XCC network in Brazil. Surpro partners with XCC network for KYC, AML, and biometric verification with blockchain tech. The agreement enables the verification of KYC, which is know your customer, KYB, know your business, and AML, anti-money laundering data, and authentication of biometric data through blockchain tech. Surpro, the federal government, state, own technology company announces Monday the 19th a partnership with XCC Network to implement new security solutions involving digital asset transactions in Brazil using blockchain. The agreement forces the integration of official data verification solutions from the Brazilian government into the XCC Network. That is big right there. Users of the system will be able to verify KYC, KYB, and AML data in addition to authentication biometric data contributing to reducing the risk of financial fraud in Brazil's expanding digital asset ecosystem. The XCC Network's presence in Brazil. The partnership with Surpro reinforces XCC Network's presence in Brazil. As recently reported by Cointelegraph, the network served as a basis for a pilot project to issue RWA tokens aimed at the international market of Mercado, Bitcoin MB, or MB, the leading cryptocurrency exchange in Brazil. Aka Finance has officially integrated with the XCC Trade Network. Aka's AI-powered liquidity aggregation is now available on XCC, providing traders with near-zero slippage, best possible rates, and instant trade execution. 
What is Akka Finance? Akka operates both as a single chain liquidity aggregator and an omni chain swap solution for any to any trading. They aggregate DEX liquidity pools on a source and destination chains to discover paths within the best or with the best rates for your any to any swaps. So there's no more hopping between DEXs and bridges when swapping your crypto. Simply sign Akka's smart contract and let them handle the rest. They perform multiple swaps and bridges on source and destination chains with no additional involvement on your end. They minimize the swaps hidden costs by shielding you from slippage and price impact. Akka Smart Router routes you single swap through multiple liquidity sources and divides it into smaller parts using transaction splitting and volume splitting mechanisms. Here's the interface here. You can see where you can swap XDC on Akka now and you just simply connect your wallet. They have Wallet Connect, Trust Wallet, MetaMask, and so on. And all you do is just type in the amount of XDC and it chooses the best route. And there you have it. Let's watch this quick clip of Ritesh, one of the co-founders of the XDC Network, briefly explain how XDC Network came about for institutions. Talk to institution, they have a very specific requirement. And so we started implementing all required elements with the network. And finally, we came out with XDC Network, which has become very popular within the enterprise. We observed that even retail started using, including uh, various use cases like deep in. I call it more as a journey. We started with something small and now it's become very huge. We have more than 20 million XDC community members supporting our network. We have presence all over the world and we have large partners, including SBI. Like last week, Deutsche Telekom also came out with the partnership details where they are going to provide deep in infrastructures or uh, using XDC network. So basically it started with very small, but now it's become very big. It's basically requirement from the user, requirement from the customers, requirement from the institutions. And we just started implementing things uh, on the network. Let's listen to Son White speak from XCC Australia. He was on an interview with uh, Digitane Innovations in Australia. They're covering a lot of groundwork, uh, the landscape, building on XCC, regulatory clarity and so on. Let's give a listen. With us, Sean White from XTC. He is responsible for building infrastructure and ecosystem uh, and also doing the business development activities on uh, XTC network here in Australia. Hi, Sean. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, Sheree. Thank you very much for having me along. Thank you very much for your time. So basically, um, we'll be discussing Web3 in general. So let's talk about, you know, how do you see a uh, Web3 ecosystem in Australia and what unique factors contribute to its growth? Yeah, well, uh, obviously, uh, a lot of tonight's going to be focused on Australia and um, being the ecosystem development um, representative for XTC Network here. Um, so Focusing on Australia, I'd probably say there's maybe three or four things which I would probably want to cover um, and give you a bit of a snapshot. I would say uh, there are many Web3 ancillary services and producers in these uh, two capital cities in Sydney and Melbourne in particular in Australia uh, with an array of sort of venture capitalist offices and business incubation um, uh, options. So there's probably you know, a bit of an innovation hub and accelerator sort of uh, presence here in Australia, but mostly in those uh, East Coast Southern states. Um, I'd probably say uh, there's another factor of the growth is, is obviously, you know, when we're looking at the contributions from research centers and academia, um, there is uh, a handful of uh, really fantastic universities here in Australia, um, thinking particularly uh, of RMIT in Melbourne and um, University of New South Wales or University of Technology Sydney in those states uh, that I mentioned just now, um, QUT and UQ and Griffith University in Queensland probably provide uh, some some good uh, blockchain, um, uh, especially some uh, postgraduate courses. Um, and then obviously there's a fair bit of community builds that go on uh, community grassroots um, sort of aspects, which is really important for the engagement 
on that soft education or their continuing education or the network um, opportunities uh, through meetups or online forums. There's a fairly strong uh, developer group, especially in Solidity um, and, uh, and things like that. You'll probably find obviously underpinning all of that is the government regulations and, and policy advisory, uh, which, which the legislators churn through. Um, if you asked, uh, you know, uh, you know, a ballpark of, of the whole industry, you'd probably get some varying degrees of, of, of satisfaction and dissatisfaction on that part. But I would say, obviously, government support uh, and regulations of Web3 is obviously a, a fairly strong um, uh, factor in, in all of that as well, Sharik. So you mentioned about regulation. I was going to ask you about how... Um... XDC is addressing that, but before going into that, what's XDC's vision in general, um, and especially in this region, uh, Australia, yeah. New Zealand? Yeah. <clears throat> well, this whole Oceania region, you know, with the South Pacific, you know, going straight through, uh, it's a it's a massive trade channel. Um, so, you know, we are we are definitely mindful of that, especially with XDC being uh, originating from a very strongly trade trade finance focused uh, blockchain. So part of the main thrust of, of what I do is to make sure that we, we uh, impress upon Oceana that we're a, an infrastructure that can handle trade. Um, so that's, that's the, the underpinning of the vision. Um, you know, we are obviously a, a tokenization platform. We have securitization of stocks and, and treasury bonds and um, commodities like gold and, and all sorts of manner of things. So. You know, we're, we're still very much uh, desiring to have builders here who are, you know, tokenizing uh, some form of, of um, commodity or, uh, or or experience for that matter. So uh, for Australia and Oceania, we're focusing on growing the blockchain ecosystem to provide that infrastructure, whether it's private or public for that matter, um, you know, for just, you know, as, a, as, a, as an option or as an alternative to sort of cloud-based sorts of DLTs. Um, I'm not too sure if there's much more else to say about our vision, but it's always evolving, Sharik. So, yep. you know, what we'd love to see is, is you know, that creativity that, that comes from Australia and, and the South Pacific, you know, that uh, connection to land and, and, and that sort of ingenuity, um, you know, which oftentimes characterizes, you know, uh, communities that have lived in isolation, whether it's New Zealand, Australia, or you know, the Pacific, or sort of Papua New Guinea, where, we're very much, you know, um, an inventive bunch of people. Um, and um, yeah, for that matter with PNG, you know, they're an MLETR region as well. So love to get uh, an export into uh, uh, Papua New Guinea um, using uh, DigiChain's um, solutions there. But that's probably the, the vision I'd say that we, that we have and that we're continually evolving. So coming back to uh, those hurdles and issues we were discussing. So yeah. we know that scalability and regulation are some of the most pressing issues uh, currently. So how is XDC Network addressing these issues and supporting the growth of Web3 solutions in Australia? Yeah. Okay. So being a, a delegated proof of stake, um, we obviously have we've got a, uh, a somewhat leaderless, but certainly randomized uh, consensus protocol which uh, becomes very energy efficient, but it also allows us to scale um, as we're something like a minimum of 2000 transactions per second. Obviously we have a hybrid uh, network, which also allows us to then um, maybe allow coders and developers and builders to, to segment and compartmentalize their, their builds as well, which, which with sharding can probably bring that number up to 40 or 50,000 transactions per second. So that's sort of the range of our scalability. Um, we're a layer one, obviously, uh, an EV, EVM compatible layer one. So, you know, we aren't at the point in our life cycle of being five years old from, uh, on our main net to, to really be too concerned about addressing scalability. Um, there's only, I don't know, ballpark, you know, couple of, couple of well, the, ex the crypto blockchain market is quite small at the moment. So we will scale ourselves as the need arises. Um, it might have taken us a couple of years to do our protocol upgrade, but I imagine that the guys, um, mind you, which is, is going to be released next month, but 
I'm sure the protocol team have already started addressing the next upgrade. So um, on that level of scalability, I think that's where we're sitting. Regulation, things that are outside of our control as an infrastructure provider. Um, you know, uh, part of our role, or part of my role in particular uh, here in Australia is, is integrating with the, um, the Digital Economy Council of Australia and all their policy advisory and uh, regulatory sort of uh, talks and um, roundtables that go on during the year. Uh, I was uh, invited to um, uh, participate in the most recent one uh, back in uh, February, I think it was, or March. Uh, and there was a, a paper that came from that, which um, which is advising government at the moment. Um, so, you know, there is there's obviously um, some harmonization that's required. Um, we want to have a global approach to um, regulations here in Australia, which sort of mirrors or at least sort of complements, you know, the leaders uh, in, in other parts of the world, which have already a bit more far advanced with integrating Web3 into um, to their society. So we only ask that we, we meet that challenge. And, um, you know, part of my job is to make sure that, you know, we give our opinion being a, a major global player and, and, and obviously dealt with a lot of the other uh, regulatory frameworks with the Monetary Authority of Singapore uh, back, back in uh, Singapore, obviously, in the uh, ADGM, the Abu Dhabi Global Markets. Um, and so obviously we're, we're very much a regulatory savvy and uh, very much a compliant network and anything i can do to kind of trickle some of that knowledge and wisdom into australia uh in various ways uh, i'm only too happy to, to help out on that as well to add to that Shurik, you know what the viewer may not appreciate is you know xcc network was invited into the international trade and forfeiting association back in 2020 which is basically a, an organization that, that, that looks after and, and promotes uh, the, the international movement and policy decisions and, and organizations to do with anything to do with trade and, and, and lending and finance, which is sort of feeds into the World Trade Organization and, uh, and things like that. So we were with the only blockchain that, that's part of that, um, that level of global uh, policy and, and harmonization of policy. So um, in, in saying that, you know, we have worked in all various jurisdictions and regions, having to kind of deal with all sorts of compliance when it comes to um, paperless trade and, and the uh, tokenization of, of, of the documents and things like that. So when we talk about um, uh, blockchains, which are savvy with, with uh, regulations, um, XTC is not only a financially prudent, um, regulatory uh, uh, aware, but we're also very much a tokenization aware um, blockchain. And we're also compliant with the ISO 20022 uh, um, payment messaging um, uh, systems as well. So we are trying to cover, well, we are covering pretty much everything to do with tokenization and payments. Um, and obviously that comes through you know, working with, with governments and regions and, and also their, their regulatory bodies.